Hello folks. Today I want to talk about a project that I'm launching on to research and then refurbish these two clocks. These are master clocks and they would do normally two functions. They would exist in a commercial building. The one on the left is from Harding High School in St. Paul, Minnesota. And the one on the right is from Fire Station 24, also in St. Paul. I just recently acquired these and I want to go through and um, see if I can bring them back to some of their former glory. The two jobs a clock like this would have would be to synchronize all of the other clocks in the building. If you have a large commercial building or a school where you've got 50 or 100 clocks, trying to keep them telling some semblance of the same time is not a simple task. And the other function is these clocks would ring bells. So this would have uh, indicated class start and stop time, uh, breaks for a factory, something like that. The clock on the left is from International Time Recording Company. Uh, that dates to somewhere probably in the 1920s. I haven't done the research yet to find out exactly when. And International Time Recording Company is actually the predecessor of what we know today as IBM, International Business Machines. This was the first product that they made um, and morphed into something a lot more complicated. On the right is the Standard Electric Time Company, and I believe Standard Electric became Simplex. So both of these have very long histories. Clocks in this style were generally from 1920 to 1960, somewhere in that general range. And so these are uh, not quite antique or very close to antique, but uh, not as old as some of the other stuff that we've talked about on this channel. I'm going to take you in a little closer and we'll show you around. Here's our international time recording clock. This has a nice 12 inch dial with a wood bezel. Really like that. In the middle is a giant timing device. This should be relatively familiar to those of us that have used those um, Christmas light timers that have the, the wheel on them and that you pop in little uh, plastic knobby things and that's what causes the timer to turn something on and off. This is the antique version of that. This big drum has uh, a number of channels and discs and these pins you would insert where you wanted the event to trigger on or off. This particular drum goes around every six hours so you can see the marks have both, in this case, seven o'clock and one o'clock. And how the clock would differentiate between that is this dial up here, which has the day of the week as well as four six hour periods. So each one of these positions, which I can advance with this little lever, corresponds to one rotation of the big drum. This clock is capable of several different zones. There are four bell zones in the clock. These are the relays that would drive the bells wherever they go, and the bottom of the clock has these push buttons where you can manually ring a particular bell. There are the bell on and off switches. And then we have a master switch. And on this side is something called the duration timer. And this is a little tiny clock mechanism that runs down for a certain period of time. It, it, winds up by a solenoid here. And then this, it's, I need to clean the movement, it's not running very well. This would determine how long the bell rings. And you can adjust that with this little pendulum weight. This would be, it would tick very fast and therefore it would be a short bell ring, or you can slide it way down here and that would be a longer bell ring. Clocks like this were powered usually from 12 or 24 volts, it kind of depended on the system. So I need to spend some time with my uh, multimeter and figure out where all the wires go and get some idea of what voltage to start the clock out. I can manually wind it up by uh, reaching in and just grabbing the spring-loaded gear at the bottom of the time train and the clock does run. It'll run for maybe 15 minutes or so without power. So if there's a brief power outage, the spring can store enough energy to keep it going for a little while. But um, there are some versions of clocks like this that have weights that run on the side of the case that would run a week before being automatically rewound. So this is the International Time Recording Company. 
from 1920-ish or something. Here's our standard electric time. This was a competitor to the International Time Recording Company. You can see they've got this nice window to view the escapement of the clock. And like on the other one, I can reach back to the bottom of the train and I can wind this clock and it'll run for a little while. I gotta find it. There it is. So there we are underway here. This one rings bells as well, and it does that via this paper mechanism, which is really fascinating. These contacts are actuated by holes in the tape. Um, this would be pre would be lifted by the hole. Uh, I'm sorry, would, uh, this would fall into the hole and that would cause this contact to close, which would then cause the bell to ring for uh, looks like probably one minute, I think, there. So that what we see on this piece of tape is probably a, a passing time, three-minute passing time. And this tape runs around on these pulleys and just goes back around. So every day that, that tape advances. You can see there's 9, 905, 910, 915. And this clock, like the other one, has four bell zones. And so this, this piece of tape has two zones on it, and you can see the two rows of holes here. There's the other back half of the mechanism where a second piece of tape would run, and then you could have different parts of the building on different schedules. Down at the bottom of this clock, we've got our bell switches and manual ringing controls, and I believe this is just a master bell system on-off. So I am excited again to get into both of these. They're uh, roughly contemporary to each other. I like the case on these, and actually I quite like the door. This is etched. I'm not sure if it was chemically etched or sandblasted, but it's just beautiful, and I love clocks that have a local connection that is understandable. And we can see here that fire station number 24 1720 East 7th Street, St. Paul. I believe the building is still standing, though it isn't a fire station anymore. So I just wanted to give a quick introduction to these clocks. Stay tuned as I get to work making them run again. Thanks for watching.